the Great War through a London child's eye. September 3rd, 1914. I'm going to visit Grandmother for a few days, so Mother has been helping me pack my trunk. I always miss my toys when I go away, even though I'm rather old to play with them now I'm 12. I've painted tin soldiers, snakes and ladders, a stuffed bear called Bruno, and masses of marbles in a tin. Not taking that old bear, are you, Edward? No, room. <sighs> Phew, I think that's everything. Oh, poor bear. We got Bruno for your fifth birthday, darling. Such a dear little thing. Who? Edward or the bear? <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best, old man. He's made by Steiff. That's German. The Bosch, you know. <laughs> Rupert Morency Defoe's father brought him a model toy locomotive and carriages. And it has real steam. Wouldn't that be something to see? I think Rupert's father owns a real locomotive, doesn't he, darling? Several, I imagine. Do you remember that old pedal car you had? You never play with it anymore. I'm rather too big for that now. Even your mother's awful cat is too big for that pedal car, Emily dear. I would like to test the theory, however. The idea of Napoleon's pampered behind, downhill at a rate of knots. Arthur! <laughs> Come on, let's go out, Edward. A bit of fishing before we set off. What say you? That is all right, isn't it, dear? Yes, of course. The job is as good as done. Go and enjoy the sunshine, darlings, while it lasts. We decided to take a long walk down to St James's Park. This took us through some mucky roads where the houses were close together. Children were playing in the street. Our road is much quieter. Most of the boys I know go off to school, you see. Some of the children here had tubes, whipping them along and shrieking with laughter. Others had spinning tops. Look, they are playing football, Father. I shall be glad to get back to school so I can play rugby again. I think I like it even more than cricket. I shall pretend I didn't hear that, Edward. Cricket is a much more civilised way to spend an afternoon. Well, cricket and fishing. Suddenly we could hear the shouting of voices and marching feet. A long column of soldiers came along the road. We stopped to watch them. A lady passing with the crowd gave Father a white feather. And even though she was smiling, Father didn't smile back. Crikey, Father. Look how many there are. The war has barely started, but there must be a hundred men. Fine fellows. It seems like everyone has joined up now. Mrs Parry was telling Mother that John enlisted the very first day. I wonder if Sydney will. Well, soldiers must be 19. Sydney's just 13, isn't he? So it is unlikely they will allow him. It must be damn frustrating for the boy. Come on, look. There are some new toys in Branning's window. Looks like even the toys are doing their bit. Yes, look, they have a ball game to kill the Kaiser, and toy bears dressed as soldiers, and a model army gun carriage. I think that would go tremendously with my tin soldiers, Father. For Christmas, perhaps? Well, they say the war will be over by then. Come on, let us not keep the fish waiting. It made me feel proud to see those men marching off to join the war. Father seemed very quiet after that. That means he was thinking hard. Lucky for us, fly fishing is good for thinking. Capital! Look at the size of him! Good show, Edward! Ha! Huh, it's incredible how the fish are fooled by your flies. They really do look just like the real thing, all done with tiny pieces of feather. It's a pity to lose them to the fish, really. Ah, but you see, you must be ready to lose a fly to catch a trout. That is what a famous writer once said, or something to that effect. I, I suppose it is like the soldiers. Even if we lose some men, it will be worth it to stop the awful things happening, like in Belgium. Whatever made you think of that? I suspect you have been eavesdropping rather too much, Edward. Sorry, Father. Anyway... We will not lose too many. Over by Christmas, isn't that right? Exactly. And when I hear that you have been studying hard at school, perhaps you will be in receipt of your very own rod. How about that? I do not think I shall be able to wait for Christmas if I am to have a rod of my very own. The Great War, through a London child's eye. Supported by the National Lottery through the Heritage Lottery Fund.